and scurry of modern life is getting a lot of us down. Or maybe we're just getting soft. For here's a shop, a department of a leading metropolitan store, dedicated to those who just can't take it. It's a sleep and comfort shop, and it's exclusively devoted to people looking for comfort, relaxation, and sleep. This happy couple, for instance, have a real problem, because the wife sinks out of sight on a soft mattress, and hubby there floats like a cork on any other kind. Well, here's the sleep shop's answer. A mattress with one side soft and the other side hard. And appropriately enough, it's called the Jack Spratt mattress. Here's another victim of the modern age. This chap's a confirmed pillow puncher. Worn to a frazzle by the day's problems, he battles it out with the pillow all night long. He's been fighting his pillow for years, and so far he's lost every round. What he needs is the new cutaway pillow, which curves around the neck and positively will not bunch around the shoulders. One trial with the cutaway type, and he's finished with pillow pummeling forever. The sleep shop offers all these devices for one purpose, to make you more comfortable and relaxed, so it will be easier to sleep. Well, that takes care of our nightlife, but what about our waking hours? Science must have some answer to a problem as important as this. Suppose we pay a visit to the laboratory of a famous psychologist and see if he can give us the answer. Dr. Laird, you're recognized everywhere as an authority on relaxation. Well, how can people relax under the tension of modern life? What's the cause of this tension anyway? And what can we do about it? There are several causes of tension. Causes which arise from inborn human reactions and are just as natural as getting hungry when we haven't eaten. One important cause is noise. Even the expectation of noise is sufficient to build up considerable tension. No matter what you try to do, your muscles start to tighten. And if you try to relax, the very attempt results in tension building effort. Notice how the clenching of the hand is measured with this instrument, which we call a tensionometer. Now, another cause of tension is the fear of falling, of loss of bodily support. In the laboratory, it's measured this way. Well, Dr. Laird, that's really tension. It looks as though she's broken the machine. This fear, like the fear of noise, is inborn. Even newly born babies show it. And anyone who has visited an amusement park can surely recognize it in grown-ups. A third and very important cause of tension is the fear brought about by limitation of movement, by loss of physical freedom. Watch this demonstration. The moment your arms are prevented from moving, an inborn fear reaction causes your muscles to tense. This reaction is brought forth by any situation which hinders free movement. I get it. That's what happens to us in a crowd. That's right. Whenever something holds you so you can't move freely, this fear develops and causes tension. Well, that's clear enough. But Dr. Laird, can people do anything to avoid tension? Yes. The way to get rid of tension is to do just the opposite of all the things that cause it. Get room to stretch out. Room to move in, to relax, let yourself go. Well, that's good news. Suppose we just look into things a little further and see what architects and engineers are doing to help us get rid of tension. Let's take noise, for instance. Let's see how the architect of the modern House of Ideas in Rockefeller Center, New York, has done away with disturbing noise in the home. First, outside noise has been cut down by packing the walls and roof with plenty of insulation. Of course, in any normal family, there is plenty of noise from inside, too. So sound deadening materials are used in some inside rooms as well. For instance, in the kitchen, to soften the clatter of pots and pans. And in this boy's room. Of course, we can't spend all our time at home. Most of us find relaxation going places. But we can find quiet while traveling, too. For the car of today is soundproofed all around in much the same way as the house of today. 
But how about the second cause of tension Dr. Laird mentioned? The fear of falling. The first place we think of is the stairs, for falls on stairs account for a big percentage of home accidents. That's why in this house, the height of the steps has been scientifically determined, and that's why they are safely carpeted to make footing firmer. Improperly designed chairs can bring out the sensation of falling. As you know, if you ever sat down in a chair a couple of inches lower than you thought it was. So the designer of these chairs made them just the right height for the average person and firm enough to give a real feeling of support. Today's modern automobile, too, has been scientifically designed to eliminate any tension caused by the fear of falling. Balanced springs have smoothed out the bumpiest roads, and the engineers have figured out ways of controlling rear spring action so that one rear seat passenger enjoys as smooth a ride as three. But how about the third cause of tension? Tension resulting from the feeling of being cramped or confined. Of course, the best way to get rid of that feeling is to get out in the open, even if it's for just a short drive in the country. For now that the modern automobile has been made so much longer and wider, there's no feeling of being confined. There's plenty of room for three couples to ride comfortably. And with the floor of the front compartment cleared of gear lever and handbrake, the front seat passengers can relax and shift position as easily as those in the rear. And in the modern home, Architects have done the same job of providing more space for everybody by making one room do the work of two or three. For instance, here's a dining room. And here's the guest room. And very attractive, too. But most families seldom use the guest room, and the dining room is used for only a short time each day. Instead of letting all this usable space go to waste, wouldn't it be nice if the two rooms could be combined into one big recreation room? Well, they can and in a jiffy. How's that for roominess? With a playroom like this for home movies or games, relaxation won't be any problem for the people in this house, particularly if they follow Dr. Laird's suggestions. So remember these simple rules to keep relaxed. Get rid of those leftover tensions in the muscles of the face and head. We have to exert ourselves at the start to get started on the habit of relaxing. Concentrate on the forehead now. We can feel the tension there. Now exert yourself to relax it. More. Still more. Look far away. Keep relaxing. Stay away from noisy places. And value the ability to make your mind a blank. Do these things to untense. And we will approach each day with a better outlook poised, relaxed. That's the way to let yourself go and have a better time going. Mm -hmm.